I have recently been asked the question several times about uh, what string do I fish with? What knots do I use? There's just so much out there. Like what's the best knot? What's the best line? And I think really uh, when it comes down to it, it's all about preference. There is some better things that, that can be done with certain string that can't be done with other string on certain reels. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. And by the way, hit the like button and hit the bell notification by the subscribe button. That way, whenever I put out a video, you'll be the first to know it. Thank y'all for watching and I hope y'all enjoy this and get something out of it. If not, drop some comments on the bottom. Let me know what y'all think. Feel free to share any information that you can with me. All right, guys, first thing I want to do is go over a few things that uh, so nobody gets confused or, you know, tries to say that I, um, I'm i trying to prove anybody wrong or I'm trying to make a big deal out of it. I'm not. This is just merely me that I just recently switched to fluorocarbon and uh, trilene uh, fluorocarbon, Berkeley. Uh, 10 pound and uh, some P line, which I don't have it right now. Um, and I used uh, Berkeley Trilene monofilament my whole entire life. I'm 47 years old. I just started, I just switched to fluorocarbon and I've never had a problem with it. Um, I've used anything from ultralight pound to, to, uh, big 30 40 pound catfish uh string you know um use several different kinds of braid um fishing big gar fish and and heavy fish mono on on redfish and and uh speckled trout and you name it everything that i could possibly have fish for i've caught on mono and i've really only used one particular knot now i know y'all gonna think this is crazy and some people might not like it, but the God's honest truth is, I grew up using monofilament tying a fisherman knot. Now, a lot of y'all don't know what a fisherman knot is, or some of you that do know, there's a couple of ways, of, there's a couple of things that they call it, a couple of ways to tie it. Pass the string through the eye one time, fold it over. There's a couple of ways you can tie this, but this is what I do. And then I turn that hook, one, two, three, count it out. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. And then take the end and pass it back through there. Now, I do wet, I wet it, and then I just so so ever so gently just pull, pull the slag down. Alright, I know I know everybody knows how to tie this. Should. If you're fishing, you know how to tie that. Then you just Cut the edge off. All right, that that is a, a classic fisherman knot, uh, um, whatever they call it. I, I'm not sure what the real name of it is, um, but anyway, that's how I was. That's how I was brought up fishing, and just here recently, in the last, I swear to God, six months, I switched to fluorocarbon. Well, guess what? Ten pound test fluorocarbon. When you pull on that line. It don't untie, it actually breaks. It breaks off. The fluorocarbon is so rigid that it will not hold to that, that eye of that hook on fluorocarbon. Now, I can tie this same, and, and I will. I got it right here. I'm gonna tie some regular mono. I'm gonna do the same thing, same test. So pass it through the eye, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Count it out, pass it through the eye. I'm gonna wet it, I always do. Pull it ever so so gently to make sure all the, 
the string gets pulled evenly. I'm not burning it. I'm not doing something on one that I'm not doing the other. Okay? Now, same knot. I don't know if you can see it. Same knot. I can't, I cannot break this string. I can't pull this string hard enough with my bare hands to break it like I just did with the, with the uh, fluorocarbon. That is a fisherman's knot. There is some, some stuff on, on fluorocarbon that I do like that is better than mono. By the time I was 10, I was tying my own knots. Uh, the same knot that I just showed you. And I never had no problems. I switched to fluorocarbon and I noticed when I would be tying my knot and go to pull it tight, it break off. 10 pound test lines. And I was like, ah, maybe I knotted it or I, I burned it or something. Well, what happens is the fluorocarbon is so rigid that you can't bear down on it like that. A 10 pound test fluorocarbon, it does not have any stretch. When you do that and you yank on it, it's gonna break every time. I don't care what kind of knot you put on it. You tie a Palomar knot in it, it will do the same thing. I know you don't believe me. Now there's two ways you can tie a Palomar knot. You can go through the eye. I'm not gonna get into details about how to tie, how to tie each one, but if you go through the eye and then and then take the the actual loop right here okay bring this back over here go make your overhand knot on that on what you just did and and it's the palomar knot it's good and then you go pass that through the hook over the hook this away pull all that that mess of string to the front i call it a mess because a lot of times i don't know what what went where and then you just pull it tight. It's probably a stronger knot in a certain condition. In this particular condition, the same string, the same knot, when I pull on it, it, it breaks. Look, the line broke. It didn't, it's not so much that the, that the knot slipped, it, just like the one before. The line breaks. The monofilament, when I tie that same knot, I can't break it. I cannot break 10 pound test line with my hands, pulling it just like that, the fluorocarbon I can. Don't wanna be confused. I don't wanna confuse nobody. I don't wanna, I'm not trying to argue or dispute the fact that the Palomar knot is better. It probably is. What I'm saying is, even on this fluorocarbon that I just started recently using, it don't matter what knot I use, that the, the actual string will break a lot easier than what it does with mono. With that being said, it don't matter what knot I tie. So let's just get that across there. I'm not disputing the knot. I'm not disputing what, what I'm saying is the string is just rigid. The next thing. All right, so we're going we, to talk about that. I'm just going to go briefly. The tri, uh, fluorocarbon on a bait caster um spooled up i do like the idea that when you cast it and you, you let your bait sink the fluorocarbon sinks a lot better it, it sinks down where the mono will kind of stay afloat and give you that straight and then down where the fluorocarbon will be like this the line goes down and then gradually to the bait over there it doesn't pendulum as much that's what i see with the line getting back to my point the actual monofilament ties a better knot holds it holds the knot better and won't break with a fisherman knot might not be the best knot for braid and surely not the best knot for for fluorocarbon because the fluorocarbon is so rigid but it don't matter what knot i've tied on fluorocarbon i'm fine and if you tie it and you yank it it's breaking it's gonna break it doesn't matter so to say that the best knot on fluorocarbon is this or the best knot i i don't particularly agree with that that's a that's a preference thing uh, there's there's so many knots out there there's a book of knots i don't even know how many there are there in there all i know is that one knot that everybody says oh quit using that that's thing in the past that's no good i have been using that fisherman knot my whole life on mono and never had a problem. 
Test it out if you don't believe me. Tie a fisherman knot like I did it, and then tie the, the Palomar knot. Oh, and by the way, that brings me up to another thing. Uh, swim jigs, um, uh, spinner baits for even, for that matter of fact. I can't tie a Palomar knot and not get these hairs and everything stuck in the, in the, in the string. It is impossible for me to do that. Now, I could take that fisherman knot and tie it just like I said, and either twist the string or, you know, twist the bait and then turn it up and, and, and pull it pull it tight. Not no problem. I can't tie a Palomar knot on that. I can't, if, if you got to start messing with loops and all that, it's over with. Not doing it. I can't do it. Maybe I'm just not coordinated enough to do it. There may be some people that do it with jigs and, and spinner baits and, and, uh, baits with three treble hooks on the bottom of it i cannot imagine doing that so i'm gonna stick to my my fisherman knot guys i hope y'all y'all take this the right way i'm not at all discriminating against any kind of knots or anything anybody else has said before in the past i was just merely uh talking about because i was asked so where the guys that asked me the people that asked me i hope y'all watching this uh, i hope you understand what i'm saying I'm a fisherman knot guy. I have always been a fisherman knot guy, and uh, it's worked for me. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so the the videos out there that's that's trying to say that it's bad or it ain't no good, I just take it with a grain of salt. You try it. You put the fisherman knot, tie it right on monofilament, and then do it on fluorocarbon, and let me know. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, if anybody got any comments or anything that uh, could be that I may have said wrong or don't understand, drop some comments. I'll be sure to explain myself better. It was just a matter of my opinion that people were asking me and I wanted to explain uh, a little bit with everybody briefly. There's nothing wrong with the fisherman knot. I promise you, nothing is wrong with that knot. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification the bell notification button me and come back and see me. I'll be back soon with a fishing video. Hope y'all enjoy. Thank you.